From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. common condition that affects uh, most commonly women. It's more common, like three times more common in women than in men. It, it affects so many organs in the body. It affects the heart, it affects the lungs, it affects the kidneys, and uh, it affects the esophagus most commonly among the gastrointestinal tract. And it results in uh, many things like pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonary heart failure, dysphagia, vaginophagia, all these things. So let us talk about uh, this disease. Basically, scleroderma or systemic sclerosis is a generalized disorder characterized by accumulation of connective tissue. It is the basically is the accumulation of excessive connective tissue, connective tissue in various organs in the body. It could be in blood vessels, kidney, lungs, heart, and it is also seen with uh, Raynaud's phenomenon and esophageal dysfunction. Now, there are two major clinical variants. There is a diffuse cutaneous disease and uh, thankfully it is only 20 percent and there is a limited disease and it is like 80 percent so there is a diffuse variety and uh, there is a limited variety in diffuse variety there is inf involvement of extremities and the trunk and the kidneys lungs and heart and in the limited variety there is this crest syndrome you see the crest syndrome calcinosis Raynaud phenomenon and then uh, esophageal dysfunction, sclerodactyly, and uh, telangiectasia. So that is the crest syndrome. It is uh, the limited variant of uh, scleroderma. And uh, there is another uncommon variant, a Wawerlap syndrome, that includes uh, scleroderma in association with the connective tissue disease. So, but remember these uh, two main variants. The disease affects all races, whites, blacks, browns, yellows, whatever background you have. And it is uh, three times more common in women than in men. And most commonly it affects between 30 years and 50 years. The prognosis, it is worse in males and patients who are older than 50 years with kidney, lung and heart disease and pulmonary disease which includes pulmonary hypertension and the renal disease, they are major causes of death. So when, when, when lungs and heart and the kidneys are involved, the prognosis is worse. And when it involves the heart, it, it causes microvascular ischemic heart disease and it follows by refractory heart failure, sudden death, and also pericarditis. So scleroderma cardiac disease, it predominantly comes as microvascular coronary artery disease and pulmonary hypertension with or without core pulmonary and pericarditis. Later, this connective tissue, the uh, accumulation can affect the conduction and can cause arrhythmias. Now, esophageal manifestations is also another important uh, area we need to study. Whenever it affects the esophagus, you say in a scleroderma or progressive systemic sclerosis, there is uh, this involvement of the gastrointestinal tract in up to 80% of patients. So 80% of patients develop the gastrointestinal tract and the most common area of gastrointestinal tract that is affected is esophagus. So the esophagus is involved and the upper esophagus and upper esophageal uh, uh, sphincter, they are not involved, but lower esophageal 
uh, tract and the lower esophageal sphincter they are involved so those are the very very important so esophagus is involved and upper esophagus and upper esophageal sphincter they are not involved whereas lower esophageal sphincter is involved now esophageal symptoms usually alter in patients with the characteristic uh, skin changes and the Raynaud syndrome so in addition to heartburn and regurgitation so these patients will develop a heartburn regurgitation and sometimes they aspirate because this uh, causes a lot of acid reflux this uh, aspirate can go into lungs and cause uh, aspiration uh, pneumonia and the peristalsis gets uh, affected and that can cause dysphagia and odynophagia so you start with uh, diagnosis you start with uh, a barium swallow and uh, you see the peristalsis and uh, then you go for an endoscopy and many of these patients like as many as 10 percent will have Barrett's esophagus you can also do a esophageal manometry to see for the pressure within the esophagus and it also the effectiveness of peristalsis then you can check the uh, pH because uh, that helps to establish the diagnosis it can also help measure the presence of acid in the proximal esophagus and pharynx in patients with cough and vocal cord problems so you can start with uh, ambulatory pH monitoring you can uh, do EGD to see for any ulcerations and you can do gastric scintigraphy gastric scintigraphy is to see the gastric emptying because many of these patients develop uh, esophageal strictures when they develop the strictures the gastric emptying is affected in such cases the scintigraphy helps to see how effectively they are emptying their esophagus and always remember other metabolic disorders like uh, diabetes amyloidosis multiple sclerosis because they can cause similar problems now treatment proton pump inhibitors is the drug of choice remember that proton pump inhibitors first thing and if the peristalsis is affected you can use uh, prokinetic things like uh, metoclopramide and whenever there is a regurgitation or cough or vocal cord uh, pro problems then you can also do fund application so that's about uh, scleroderma with manifestations in the esophagus remember the lower esophageal sphincter is affected they might they might develop a structure basically structure is narrowing and when that narrowing develops they will have problems with the dysphagia and gastric emptying and acid reflux and the diagnosis is barium swallow esophageal uh, gastroduodenoscopy and you can also do manometry to see the pressure you can do ambulatory pH monitoring to differentiate it and uh, I can also do scintigraphy to see for the gastric emptying coming to the treatment you start with your proton pump inhibitor and also prokinetic agents like metoclopramide and when there is uh, these vocal cord problems cough and reflux then you can also do fund application that's about scleroderma thank you very much thanks for listening for more medical videos please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site if you are preparing for usmle plab and other medical exams make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations for more information visit us at www.drpaul.org thank you and may god richly bless Bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.